Tested. Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. It has been a while since I destroyed something beautiful, but, well, today's the lucky day. I have, well, it's Norman's Kindle 3, the third generation Kindle. It's sitting right here. I'm gonna take it apart and see what makes it tick right now. I have the normal assortment of tools, a small adjustable screwdriver, a bunch of spudgers, both metal and uh, plastic. I've added a non-magnetic pair of tweezers, have a pair of pliers, and the always popular Dance Central sweat rag because I get sweaty while we're doing this. The first thing I noticed about the new third gen Kindle is that it is basically impenetrable from the outside. You look, there's no feet, there's no labels on the back, there's no screws, there's no kind of visible place to open this. There's not even really a seam on the side. So looking a little more closely, it looks like this seam right here, this one, is actually the way you open this thing. I've never seen a seam like this before. I'm gonna get in with a spudger and see how it goes, so wish me luck. Looks like pushing out at the edges is the way to go. Oh, that's really pointy. Okay, so it seems like the way to get this to pop open best is kind of gently insert a spudger in here and then pry out so that it releases the, the, the little clips. You can see them right here from the edge, from the bezel edge. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Work it down the side. Once you get a weak seam, once you get it open someplace, just keep working around the edges. Oh god, there's a cable there. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, looks like everything just worked. Uh, there's a couple of clips on the inside here that seem to go in somewhere down here. Not exactly sure where. This is the, again, the third generation Kindle. So here we have a big giant battery, a whole bunch of stuff under uh, EM shields. We'll pop those off in a minute. And let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see, what, see what's in here. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, take off the battery because we don't want to electrocute me. Or at least I don't want to electrocute you. You guys might find that entertaining. Okay, so here's the battery. It is a 3.7 volt, 1750 milliamp hour uh, lithium polymer. So just like that, and it has a whole bunch of stuff written in Chinese on the other side. Next thing I'm gonna do is take out the motherboard. As you can see, uh, it looks like it's a single piece board, goes around the outside edge. This is gonna be the back of the e-ink screen. I don't know if I can get that out, but I guess we'll try, why not? Uh, and now, oop, these are two little gaskets. Uh, these metal guys right here, I don't know if you can see them but there are two little gaskets that were in the battery holder. So it looks like there was some sort of contact or insulator or something. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Okay, so unscrewing stuff. This is the Wi-Fi model, not the 3G model. I'm not using the tape today because I think that it's a little more hassle than it's worth sometimes. I didn't expect to find this many screws in here. These are the speakers down here. You can see there's two of them. There's vents on the, on the this is the top, yeah. So here's the speaker grills on the top of the Kindle. And here are the speakers themselves. Uh, I can't tell what kind of speakers they are. They look like the little flat, uh, kind of chintzy ones. As it, so the first couple of screws out of the motherboard are these little tiny black things. They're virtually invisible. And there are a boatload of them. So one of the neat things about the new Kindle is that the, the, the case, the official case from Amazon, delivers power for a light built into the case through the hinge, through the, through the mounting points. So these are the two mounting points. And if you can see, here's where one of them goes in the bottom one, here's where the top goes in. So it looks like, you know, there's circuitry here and there's a ground here. So you can make a complete circuit through the, through the, through the, just the metal edges of the, of the case, which is pretty neat. Okay, I'm taking out a ton of little itsy bitsy screws now. These are gonna be really fun to get back in. Looking forward to it already. Six, seven. I don't know what this is. This might be the, the driver for the keyboard, possible? I don't know, let's see. I think this guy's gonna just pop off. I'm gonna use a plastic spudger. Oh, yep, see, just a normal friction connector, the kind that you jam straight down. I don't know exactly how this kind works. I've never seen it before. So we're gonna gently pull it out. Is that possible? Yeah, it flips up. Okay, so this one flips up and then this guy slides out. Um, and it actually looks like it's anchored a little bit somehow. So uh, this guy is for something else. This one might be the keyboard, actually. This is almost certainly the display controller, uh, display connector up here. Does it lift up? Yeah, it just lifts up. So I just use my fingernail and pop this little spring-loaded guy up. 
These are much easier ribbon cables to work with than are in the iPhone or the DS even. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to disconnect is the speaker ca cable over here. Uh, and it's just kind of an old school PC style connector. I'm going to get a pointy spudger and use that to release it because it's not that sensitive. And if the speakers stop working, I'm not going to be heartbroken. Uh, why does the Kindle even have a speaker? The Kindle has a speaker because it can play MP3s and audiobooks. Uh, at least I think audiobooks. It can, it can play, it can text to speech. Uh, some books, if the publisher allows it. So that's the reason it has a speaker. Uh, I mean, the last thing I want to do is take off these five screws or four screws on the hinge power connector, just because I think that's probably holding the motherboard down, if I had to guess. Let's get those screws out. So these are the four screws that go with the um, with the power connector for the hinge. I think with that, the motherboard's ready to come out. You know that these are going well if I start sweating profusely before we're 20 minutes in. I think I'm missing a screw someplace. One right here that I, it was completely invisible to me. Gently sliding out. I heard something pop there. That's usually a bad sign. Release the speaker cable. So this is the motherboard. Um, underneath this, we'll find all sorts of CPUs. It doesn't say uh, Lab 123, I think, which was at the old, the secret think tank that built the original Kindles were, but it looks like we have a 3Com Atheros, or, or sorry, R ROCM. Looks like an Atheros Wi-Fi chipset on here. This is clearly a spot where an RF, uh, RF shield would normally be. Let's go ahead and pop the RF shields off and see what's under here. There's one. There's actually little holes in these things that you can kind of get a grip on. You don't want to dig under because you don't want to cut into the board. But getting on the corners is not a bad thing at all. See that, there's the ticket right there. Three, holy cow. Okay, so more, that's all of the shields. This, this little plastic thing down here is the placeholder for the 3G modem, the, you know, the cellular modem that lets you pull down uh, books from anywhere in the, in the 3G model. Uh, and then these are memory. This looks like, uh, if I had to guess, memory. There's an Epson chip in here that's the e-ink controller, if I remember right. Um, and then this other one down here is going to be... Boy, these, they put these uh, the spacers in precisely the right place to make these impossible to read. Uh, this is a Marvell chipset, so it's going to be a Wi-Fi controller or something like that, probably, or a CPU even. If I haven't learned my lesson from the iPad, which taking the screen out is where things went really bad, well, now's the time to not learn the lesson about the Kindle third generation. More of the little tiny, almost invisible motherboard screws. This little guy uh, fits in right here, and it's kind of spring-loaded. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, unless it's to just tell the device. It maybe by, by pushing the connector in there, it activates the circuit and turns the light on. Oh boy. As Fred Sanford famously said, this is the big one, Elizabeth. Hmm. Okay, so this little guy down here is the keyboard. I don't know what the hell this is. Oh, this is the this must be the controller for the display. That would make sense since it's plugged into the display. So uh, this plugs in on the motherboard. If I can remember right, the motherboard was in this way. So this plugs in on the motherboard down here. The display, uh, the keyboard is going to plug in over here on this one. Um, I guess that's it. So um, let me put it back together and let's see if it works. I have kind of a bad feeling about this one. One, two, three, four cables. So if you see the power, there's power leads here. They're gonna line up with those, with those connectors on the bottom of this little duber. And that whole thing is just gonna go right here. You know, you're looking at this big plastic thing, wondering maybe, you know, could you buy the cheap Kindle for 140 bucks? Uh, you know, instead of buying the $180 one with 3G, just get your own 3G card and add it to it. Um, I don't think that's very realistic, just because it looks like this this, is, this would have to be soldered on. And that you'll have a hard time finding something that'll fit in this little tiny space that's not custom designed for the for the Kindle itself. 
I'm connecting the ribbon cables. These are really nice, sturdy ribbon cables. They're easy to get in here. I'm not having the kinds of problems that you normally have doing these. I mean, anybody who's watched these videos in the past knows this is the part of the show that sucks. So uh, before I close it all the way up, I'm going to put the battery in and power it up and make sure everything's working and all my connectors are good. Uh, just because I don't feel like that pop-on, pop-off back is real sturdy. And I don't want to have to do this again if I can help it. I don't want to take it apart again if I can help it. Okay, green light on the bottom. That seems good. Powering up. Lights are flashing. Oh, hey then. I have an extra screw here. Living on the edge, still have halfway to boot. So if you're booting again, that might be a bad sign. Oh wait, no, it's thinking. It's connecting the network perhaps. And there are books, let's see if the buttons work. Oh yeah. I don't know why Norm has Confessions of a Shopaholic on here. It's just a sample, so I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. He's saying it's for comedy, but I don't know if I believe that. Let me uh, see if we can do text-to-speech on the Welcome Norman. Meeting on an advanced wireless device oh, yeah. instead be Let's make sure the volume buttons work. Volume button's still working. Wi-Fi is still working. Page turning back. Page turning back. Page turning forward. Page turning forward. Page turning forward. Oh, wait, that's the end. Page turning forward. Uh, huge success. So there we go. I'm going to pop the lid back on here, and we'll call this a day. That was how to take apart the third generation Kindle. It's pretty, the screen's bright. We'll have a full review later. For Tester Time Will, thanks for watching.